In 2009, Mark Martin confirmed the fears that many in the NASCAR world had about Hendrick Motorsports, that they were truly making NASCAR's first super team. Joining teammates Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., it seemed that Hendrick Motorsports was destined to obliterate the competition in its 25th year anniversary. Starting off, that didn't seem to be the case for Martin and the five team. The he's slowing down oh. in Krista. Maybe an outbreak here. here. Mark Martin in the five. Caution is out. Raining again. And let's check with Krista. I mean, three Hendrick cars with engine trouble at the same time. Well, Larry, Mike DW, Mark Martin came on the radio and said, we may be out west, but the engine is heading south. He thinks, said when Pitt wrote, but with the rain coming, they don't want, they want to stay out. Mark said, valve cover come off, Matt. And that's what I was about to say. They're not that far from five a five car. Isn't stop. It? Five cars got a problem. No, there. this this is their green flag stop. Remember, they stayed out the last caution. This Boy, should be. He, the... was, he was smoking the tires all the way up in the middle of the corner. Dick. Well, Mark Martin said that the car came out of gear and blew up too. So it all happened at the same time. And perhaps when the engine did come out of gear, it over revved, but it's gone. Mark Martin's day is done. After four races, Martin was already 34th in the points, 189 out of the chase already. But with the next three races being top 10 finishes, Martin jumped up 16 spots to 18th, now only 93 back from 12th. And in the eighth race of the season at Phoenix, Martin broke through. Driver, white flag in the air. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth, one more. Like Mark needs to be told, nice and smooth. He's got a one second lead. He's got half a lap to go. I'm going to tell you what, this is going to be a popular win with the fans and with the competitors. I guarantee you that. And I'm really happy for Rick Hendrick because this five car, it's been a while since it won a race. And Rick really is proud of this opportunity way that uh, got to send it. Mark him. Good job, Mark. The win vaulted him to be right outside the chase, only nine points back in 13th. Unfortunately, the elevator finishes would crash down to the bottom the next week at Talladega with a 43rd place finish after a crash, meaning that his performance needed another increase. 93 Southern 500. He has 25 top 10s here. This is his 43rd Darlington race, and he's on the money lap. One to go. Has a pretty clean racetrack in front of him. There's one car out there, about four or five car lengths. He's halfway down the back straightaway now. What a great night for him and his team. He can almost coast home from here. And I think we're going to make it. <laughs> I think the you old are, man, Mark. Mark Martin, second win of the season, second win at Darlington. Mark Martin wins. The win jumped Martin into the chase for the first time after a race since 2007. Over the four races after this, Martin would slowly fade back to 13th in points. This would change with an absolutely crazy finish at Michigan. White flag is out. Jimmy oh, Johnson's Jimmy Johnson out of fuel. Jimmy Johnson is out of fuel. Biffle leads. White flag in the air. This is the last lap. Biffle may be the new Silver Fox. Well, well hang on. We got a long way to go. We got Mark Martin sitting right there. Mark just moved to second. Biffles, he looks to be he's slow. Slower. He's slower. Is he slower? He's off the pace. He's off the pace. Here, Here comes, comes Mark. 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 Oh, he's barreling. Oh, my God. Oh, look at Biffles. He's shaking it. He he's just shaking went it. to the switch. Here comes Here Mark. Comes Mark. Oh, no. Half a lap from the finish. Mark Martin to the lead. Incredible. Does he have enough fuel? This is drama, dude. This is oh, yeah. He can, co he can coast from here. Out of he's four. got it. Biffles going to coast. He's got Mark four Martin. wins here and another one today. Mark Martin takes the checkered flag of Michigan. The fuel mileage gamble brought him up to eighth in points, and unfortunately, again, Martin's inconsistency reigned supreme as he finished 35th, 14th, and 38th to follow up the win. Once again, unfortunately, he would enter a race 13th in the points just out of the chase grid. This time, the race is at Chicagoland. Stewart, Stewart began in 32nd tonight, running inside the top five. Here we go, white flag is out. I'm telling you, these guys chasing Mark Martin better be glad it's not another 100 laps in this race or he'd lap them all. Right, and Casey Kane had a great night. How about Tony Stewart? Look as Stewart. far back as 17th Jamming. after that pit stop has driven back to fourth. What a great run. What a great Coming run to the checkered Martin. flag, Mark Martin takes the win. Jeff Gordon finishes in second. 
Once again, Martin would score a win, but this time he would back it up, finishing second and seventh in the following races. At Michigan, where he had previously won another great fuel mileage race, finish was in effect. This time, though, the five car was on the losing end of it. Jeff Gordon will come second. Dale Jr. Jr. third. Here's Mark Martin losing spots. He goes through, turns three and four. He's just in the middle of three and four right now. Yeah, he's going to lose a lot of spots for him. Because of falling from 7th to 31st in the final finishing order, he lost 76 crucial points. Instead of being 9th in points, 88 in, he was 12th in points, 12 in. Once again, though, he backed it up in the long run, with finishes of 2nd, 5th, and 4th, meaning that Martin would qualify for the chase, and his qualification vaulted him up to the points lead, with 10 races remaining. A lead that would only grow more at New Hampshire. Flag. So they'll race back here to the checkered flag. Caution's not out yet. They're still racing. No caution yet. They got cars sitting here. They're going to have to throw the caution. Still not out. Still not out. It's going to come into the checkered they flag. Green. I'm really. Are now the caution's out. Coming to the checkers. Coming to the checkers. And it is officially Watch over. Watch out. Watch out. The, Watch out. the caution's out. You got the win. His lead would now be 35 over Jimmy Johnson and Denny Hamlin with nine races remaining. While Johnson won at Dover, the five came home right behind him. And while he won the pole at Kansas and led laps, he finished seventh. Luckily, though, the 48 would be two spots behind him. So the gap with seven races left in the season was 18 points. What was unseen was that the season's momentum would shift for both drivers at Fontana. Leaving Fontana, Martin trailed Johnson by 12. He looked to regain the lead heading into Charlotte. But the guy who is chasing history in NASCAR you got to be me. has done it tonight at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Jimmy Johnson gets the win. With the 17th place finish, the five fell back 90 behind the 48. And with the 48 finishing second to Martin's eighth, the gap only grew to 118 points heading into Talladega a race that looked to end Martin's championship bid for good. Yeah. No! Oh, oh, here goes Kirk Busch around. Oh. Crash behind you. Tr crash, crash. Oh, oh upside Mark's down. Upside Mark, 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 Mark Martin is over oh, on his roof. Back on his wheel. Into the wall. Casey Mears, Rudiman is there. Reagan is there. Robbie Gordon, Jeff Gordon. 184 points. That was the difference. More than a race's worth of points would separate the 5 and the 48. But as is always the case in NASCAR, the twists and turns of the season proved to add even more intrigue the next week. Lap three, watch Jimmy Johnson, watch him three wide on the outside of the 77. In fact, Rudiman got into the back of uh, Sam Hornish in the 77. That shoved him up into Jimmy. It looked like Jimmy might almost have it saved, but he got back into Hornish there. And then goes down and collects the inside wall. You see Sam Hornish getting against the wall on the outside. With Martin's fourth place finish, he closed back up to 73 points back. And the next week, Martin once again came home in the fourth spot. The only problem, though? The three-time and defending NASCAR Sprint Cup champion gets it done and wins the third year in a row here at Phoenix. With only Homestead remaining, Martin would need to make up 108 points. Unfortunately, he would struggle terribly during the race and come home in 12th. Johnson would exceed the minimum clinching finish of 27th by bringing his 48 car up to the fifth spot to finish. The gap would end up being 141 points for the championship as Johnson would win his fourth consecutive title. As for Martin, 2009 proved to be his final chance to win it all as he slowly but surely drifted away from the championship conversation as the years went on. The biggest problem he had this year was his teammate, was just far too good to beat. It makes many wonder, what if Martin had been more consistent in the chase in 2009? What if his 2009 season had been some other year that Johnson wasn't so dominant in? What if, in 2009, Mark Martin captured his missing ring?